Have you ever wondered why certain pitches perform significantly different despite being thrown at the same velocity? Well, movement is probably the biggest reason why. You're probably wondering, how do I maximize both the velocity and movement of my pitch? Well, first, you've got to understand the basics of pitch movement. In this video, we're going to provide an introduction to movement and look at the types of spin involved in the pitch. This is going to just be a precursor to our pitch type series, so understand this is intended for a new audience. We'll also be sure to link some additional reading below for those who really want to get ahead up on their continued education. The most intuitive place to start when it comes to movement is going to be looking at spin rate. At the big league level, there's historically been a track man and now a Hawkeye ball tracking unit that's going to show the spin of the ball, the velocity, the induced vertical break, and the horizontal break, among many other pitch metrics. The first pitch metric we're going to contextualize here is just going to be spin rate, or RPMs, which is short for revolutions per minute. This measures how much the ball is spinning and is the sum of the transverse, or useful spin, and gyroscopic spin. In 2021, the following pitch types had these spin rate averages. The four-seam fastball, 2,275 RPMs, sinker, 2,125 RPMs, the cutter, 2,375 RPMs, slider, 2,425. The curveball had the highest raw spin rate at 2,500 RPMs. And finally, lumping the changeup and splitter together, the pitch averaged 1,700 RPMs over the 2021 season. It is immediately apparent that breaking balls have higher spin rates than their fastball and changeup counterparts. The relationship persists when pitchers throw a fastball that has some inadvertent or intentional cut on it. The spin rate of that pitch will generally go up relative to if the pitcher were completely behind the ball. An additional piece of context to take into account is that the harder a pitcher throws their fastball, the more the spin rate will climb. As a result, many further contextualize this into a spin velocity ratio to get feel for how impressive the spin rate is relative to that pitcher's fastball velocity. At the big league level, the average spin to velo ratio was about 24 and a half for a four seam fastball and just under 23 for a sinker. Let's next get into the deferring types of spin prior to contextualizing spin efficiency or active spin percentage. Making up transverse or useful spin are the following, backspin, topspin, and sidespin. Simply put, when holding velocity equal, the more backspin a pitcher applies to a baseball, the more the pitch will fight gravity, resulting in a pitch that drops less as it makes its way towards the plate. The more backspin a pitch has, the more induced vertical break or carry it'll have on a break chart. This is most prominent in the four seam fastball. Topspin has the exact opposite effect. Most prominent in the curveball, topspin will result in the pitch breaking downward. The more topspin a pitch has, the more depth or downward vertical break it'll have on a break chart. Sidespin contributes to the lateral movement of the pitch. Obviously, this can go either in the arm side direction, such as a sinker or changeup, or to the glove side direction, most prominent in a sweeper and a lot of curveballs. From a right-handed pitcher's perspective, a pitch with positive horizontal break will plot on the arm side or right of a break chart. A pitch with negative horizontal break will plot on the glove side or left of a break chart. Finally, we have gyrospin or bullet spin. Without going too far down the rabbit hole, gyroscopic spin does not contribute to the Magnus Force at all, whereas the three types of spin mentioned previously do. Gyrospin is far and away the most prominent type of spin in a league average slider. Let's next talk about actful spin, also known as useful spin or spin efficiency. We already know that a pitch has a raw spin rate. This number is immediately agnostic towards whether or not this spin is transverse or gyroscopic. If we go to Baseball Savant's leaderboards page, we can actually objectify what percentage of a pitcher's spin is active or gyroscopic. Here were the active spin numbers for our six main pitch types. Four seam fastball, on average, had 90% active spin. Sinker, 87% active spin. The cutter came in at 46%. The average slider had the lowest average active spin at 37%. The curveball led all breaking pitches by a good margin at 69%. Changeups had the highest active spin ratio at 92%. Splitters, on the other hand, had an active spin average of 80% across the league. If you've ever used a rap soto when pitching or developing a pitch, this number is going to show up as the spin efficiency. Unfortunately, there's no public data available on what proportion of the spin was backspin, sidespin, or topspin. Simply, those three combined and the gyroscopic spin, though it can be inferred off of season averages. Pitchers with a higher active spin percentage will have a higher proportion of spin-induced movement on their baseballs. This is going to lead to more movement on average. Again, there's another component known as seam shifted wake where the gyroscopic spin turns into active spin after release, but we're really not gonna go too far into that topic in this video. Just know that on average, a pitch with more active spin 
is going to have more total movement than a pitch with less active spin. To hammer this point home, Twins reliever Caleb Theobar had an active spin percentage of just 38% on his slider this season. Remember, the league average is 37%. However, his slider moved on average 15 inches to the glove side. The big league average was 6 inches. That's letting you know that a lot of that gyroscopic spin that's being created in his pitch is turning into side spin after it leaves his hand. Next up, we'll discuss spin direction. There are two spin directions that are directly reported from Baseball Savant. The inferred spin direction simply looks at what the spin direction was out of the hand, meaning if no other forces were acting on the ball, what would we expect the spin direction of that ball to be as it gets to the plate? The observed spin direction tracks the movement of the pitch and just reports back what the direction of movement was and is indifferent to how the ball reached its destination. As we get through our pitch type series, we'll provide more context for how these two differ. But for the context of this video, we're going to simply keep ourselves concerned with the observed spin direction. On a clock, a pitch with pure backspin will have a spin direction of 12 o'clock. Opposite of that top spin, a pitch that had pure top spin would have a spin direction of 6 o'clock. Side spin from a right-hander that went to the arm side and purely had just side spin would be at 3 o'clock. Pitches rarely hit these extreme spin directions and generally fall somewhere in the middle. For example, most four-seam fastballs come in at around 12.45 to a 1.15 spin direction meaning they have a balance of backspin and sidespin involved with the pitch. A pitch with a spin direction of 130 would have equal parts vertical and horizontal break. A 730 curveball would have equal parts downward vertical break and horizontal break, meaning top spin and sidespin, hence the name slurve. Let's look at 2021 spin direction averages by pitch type. For fastballs, we can see that sinkers have a higher proportion of sidespin on average, whereas the four-seamer is equipped with primarily backspin. What stands out with the changeup is that its spin direction is fairly close to that of the sinker. It's generally easier to create separation off of a four seam relative to a sinker. We'll break this down in more detail when we break down the changeup in a future video. Cutters on average have a higher proportion of backspin relative to sidespin as their spin direction of 11.10 on average is closer to 12 o'clock than 9 o'clock, though gyroscopic spin is still primarily the main spin involved in the offering. The average slider primarily has gyroscopic spin, but on average come fairly close to seeing their useful spin consist mostly of side spin. Again, the average curveball actually has very similar amounts of top spin and side spin. The average spin direction comes to around 715. We'll wrap things up with our final section, pitch movement. With our context of spin rate, active spin, and gyroscopic spin, we're ready to jump into what is ultimately the meat and potatoes of pitch quality, induced vertical break and horizontal break. To begin, these are short form movement values, which means it's agnostic towards gravity and other environmental factors such as drag or air resistance. The movement values are relative to a ball with no movement or spin. A pitch with 16 inches of vertical break doesn't actually move upward, but it does fight gravity better than a pitch with 13 inches of vertical break at the equivalent velocity. Human beings are currently not capable of throwing a pitch with enough velocity or movement to effectively get it to rise, but they're capable of getting hitters to swing underneath their fastballs by throwing pitches that effectively rise relative to the hitter's expectations. This calculation is taken from when the pitcher releases the ball and looks at the movement up until it crosses the plate. The biggest correlator towards creating total movement on a pitch, as we've already discussed, is looking at the total amount of transverse or useful spin on a pitch. Again, there's two ways to do this. Create a ton of raw spin, but probably more importantly, create a lot of transverse spin or be efficient with that spin. As an example, let's look at Luis Castillo's slider against Sunny Gray's. Here's what this would look like on a break chart. Castillo's slider essentially mimics a pitch with no movement in the short form, though it will still drop and deviate from his fastball due to gravity and the fact that it has no backspin on it. Meanwhile, Grays has an incredible amount of glove side movement on it. As a matter of fact, only Kyle Crick averaged more than 20 inches of horizontal break on his slider over the course of the entire 2021 season. As you progress with pitch movement, you'll note that pitches deviate so much in how they move that their liberal classifications of slider, curveball, and cutter simply don't provide the necessary context for what the pitch looks like. As we dig into the individual pitch series, we'll classify these pitches off their movement metrics rather than what the pitcher classifies it at. In this case, we'd consider Gray's slider a sweeper and Castillo's a gyro slider. Another thing to keep in mind is that you can basically read the spin direction off of a break chart as well. We can visually tell from the break chart that the pitch Sunny Gray threw consists mostly of side spin and thus will be close to nine o'clock. Let's take a look at league average pitch movement by pitch type for the 2021 season. The average right-handed four-seam fastball had 16 and a half inches of vertical break and seven and a half inches of horizontal break. For sinkers, you can almost flip the horizontal and vertical averages from the four-seamer to get league average movement, though the pitch has a bit more lift on average at nine and a half inches. On average, the changeup has five and a half inches of carry. 
Once again, we can see it hovering closer to the sinker, though it distinguishes itself from the four-seamer on the brake chart. Cutters have a higher active spin percentage than sliders on average. However, that spin is mainly put towards backspin, meaning the pitch won't create as much depth as the slider. The pitch came in with an average of 8 inches of vertical break and 3 inches of glove side action. Sliders vary widely in their shape and have an average of about an inch and a half of carry and nearly 7 inches of sweep. Finally, the average curveball has just about equal parts downward vertical break and equal parts side spin. It is the only pitch that averages negative vertical break with 11 inches on average and 10 inches of glove side horizontal break. In a separate video, we'll go down the rabbit hole of looking at each of these pitches independently and further contextualizing their unique movement along with how to throw the pitches. While there's still much more to movement, such as seam shifted wake or the effects of gyro spin turning into active spin as it journeys to the plate, this video focused on discussing the basics of movement. Once again, we'll be sure to link continued education and some of our driveline blogs in the description. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. We look forward to seeing you guys in the future videos we have on the Pitch Type series. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe.